Greetings. It is election day eve and I'm wearing camouflage. Um, not <laughs> because of the election, but because this coat is the uh, best windbreaker. It is 63 degrees here in northern Wisconsin in the middle of November. So I went for a bike ride and I had these uh, reflections, which will be uh, this week's, frankly, um, I would like to talk about the COP27 in Egypt, um, which I expect will fail uh, like the prior 26 uh, convenings of parties, at least insofar as reducing emissions and mitigating uh, the default climate trajectory. And I'll explain why uh, in a moment. Um, last month, I did a, frankly, on the seven stages of climate awareness uh, which basically was stage one, uh, there is an environment. Stage two, climate is part of the environment. Stage three, uh, the climate changes, and that's due to CO2. Uh, stage four is that fossil fuels uh, are the biggest driver of climate. Stage five is that um, energy is vital to human uh, civilization. Stage six is that we're part of a system, uh, economy, growth, debt, climate, um, all that fits together. And stage seven is that we're not going to be able to directly solve uh, for climate. Uh, climate is a symptom of a much larger uh, problem, and therefore we have to look two or three steps ahead. In thinking about that, I realized there are other categories with which we view the issue of climate from different perspectives. One of them, which I'm going to talk about today, is what we care about. Um, and then in the not too distant future, I will also talk about various climate scenarios and also various interventions as individuals or as society. But first of all, what's going on in COP27 uh, in Egypt, the reason that it's failing is because we're trying to optimize three things. We're trying to optimize climate change and emissions. We're trying to optimize economic growth and the market system. And we're trying to optimize equity or inequality, both within countries and between countries. So if we're ever going to solve any of these things, we have to understand how it is that humans care about climate change. So here is, again, from my perspective, this is no academic empirical study, but there are seven stages of what we care about. Number one, obviously, is we care about ourself. I went on a bike ride today at 63 degrees um, in November. How is climate going to affect me in north central Wisconsin, um, is it going to cause me to uh, have heat problems or wet bulb issues? Well, I, I mean, I have air conditioning. And for me personally and my vocation, I'm probably more likely to be killed by speaking about climate than I am about actual climate change. But as biological organisms, we first care about ourselves. The second stage is our future self, and our future self is really almost an illusion emotionally. We can envision in 20 years, in when I'm in my mid-70s, what it might be like, and, but emotionally I don't really think about that. I think about the, the things in the near term, this weekend or next month. Uh, and frankly, when I'm in my mid-70s, I'm going to worry about my lower back and my arthritis and my knee and being able to afford other things, I'm personally not really thinking about mid-2040s, what the climate's going to be like, um, though I probably should. I'm, I'm cognitively imagining it, but I'm emotionally not. The third stage beyond self and future self is our friends and family. And I don't have any children. I have cultural children, the 270 uh, uh, students that were my former students. I have a lot of young people in my extended uh, cousins, uh, et, et cetera. And so that, that's the next stage of what humans care about for biological reasons. We care about our kin. 
The fourth level is the region where I live and the people in my region. Minnesota and Wisconsin uh, actually don't look so bad in the intermediate term climate models um, in the middle of the distribution. Um, so I think about what will this place look like? I've gotten to know the ecology, the ecosystems, the animals, the rivers, the back forests and stuff where I live. And I do think about what will be the climate impacts of that. So those are the kind of four stages that are common. But outside of that, which are things that we don't often emotionally think about is stage five, which is other people in other areas of the world. I did a beautiful podcast a few weeks ago with Ayan Mahmoud from uh, Uganda. And she's talking about already the challenges that people are facing with higher wet bulb temperatures and lack of air conditioning. And um, my friends at uh, TMP Mission Climate, Frank, get down now, have created a graph showing uh, that the even in the coming decade, those areas in the world that we're going to have to go in a decarbonation, um, in a decarbonization pathway, we're going to have to rematerialize, and those minerals and materials are going to come from countries that are going to have a combination of higher wet bulb temperatures, more civic strife, uh, and higher climate impacts. So these are things that we don't really think about. Plus, many of these countries aren't going to be able to afford air conditioning. And a wet bulb uh, temperature is... There's a dry temperature, and then if you combine the humidity and both temperature and humidity are expected to increase in the various climate scenarios, above uh, uh, it used to be above 35 degrees Celsius was fatal for humans because our sweat would not be able to evaporate. They've now shown that that 35 degrees is actually lower. It's 31 and a half degrees is the correct number. So in the not too distant future, hundreds of millions of people will live in regions where higher temperatures and humidity will be fatal unless they have air conditioning and or shade or, or other things. So the fifth stage is, is caring about people outside of our immediate um, biologically related, culturally, geographically related sphere. And this may be the first time in human history that there is a risk that we can think about that goes and extends way beyond our, our tribe. The sixth stage, you can guess where I'm going with this, is other species. And what is the wet bulb equivalent for dolphins and elephants and apes and lions and deer and uh, exotic animals and insects and birds? And how will they move or adapt? Uh, Daniel Pauly and I did a podcast already. Ocean fish are moving northward because they're not getting the same amount of oxygen they were because the waters are warming. Very few people, when they think about, oh, climate change is going to be this, think about other species. And the seventh stage of what we care about is, of course, other generations of humans of global ecosystems of other species. The climate models that are shown in the news all end in the year 2100. Um, we have equilibrium climate sensitivity, but there's an earth system climate sensitivity, which is after all the feedbacks have run their course, what is the ultimate resting point of, of temperature? And that's well, well beyond the year 2100. And emotionally, uh, things more than 10 years away have effectively a zero value in our minds. So it's very difficult for us to think about or care about the deep future. So <sighs> climate equity is one of the things that's being discussed in Egypt, is re reparations and making people uh, um, whole for the damages that 90% of the emissions in the world are from the top 10% of uh, wealthy countries. And I think there's a certain logic to this that these other countries are not, have not contributed to the problem, yet they're bearing the brunt of it. 
And I think this is all viewed from an economic standpoint right now. But if you consider our place in the carbon pulse, we're somewhere between the two stars on the graph. And on the upslope, we can talk about equality as giving others a uh, part of the wealth because they haven't grown as much. But I fear on the downside of the carbon pulse that the, um, the equity and the sharing is going to be life or death. It's not going to be an economic argument because on the downslope of the carbon pulse, not only do we have 40 or 50 years of increasing temperatures ahead of us, even if we were to stop all fossil carbon burning today, but we're going to have less energy and more expensive energy with which to respond to the crisis, especially air conditioning. So it really makes me wonder um, if climate change is the first issue in human history where the equality um, issue becomes one of an existential issue and what will be the impacts down the road uh, in Africa, in South America, uh, in poorer countries that uh, have high heat and high humidity. And I don't think we have any plan for this. President Biden four days ago said no more drilling. Yet two months ago, he's proud to show that we are drilling in response to um, uh, higher oil prices. I, I can imagine these high-level political uh, officials um, going to a meeting on climate change and they hear how urgent and dire it is and they nod their heads. And then they go to another meeting about the economy and how we need lower oil prices. And they nod their heads and say, we're going to do this. And then they go to another meeting and say, we need to have more equality. The wealth and income equality in our country, in our world is extreme. And this isn't fair. And they nod their heads. There is no plan on how to solve all of these things together. So those of you that have followed my work know that our human system has a metabolism. And this metabolism is stronger than our politicians and our billionaires and our philanthropists. And we're going to eventually run out of enough low cost hydrocarbons to continue growth. And then everything changes. In order to really change that, yes, we have to understand how the climate system interacts with human systems. We are also going to have to change what we care about. We're going to have to extend the boundaries of our empathy and concern beyond myself and my future self and even my genetic kin. I don't know how this is going to happen. I think about it all the time. Uh, and so this is not a uh, prescription or an answer. I just wanted to reflect that we care about different things and that is a piece of the puzzle. Thank you. I will talk to you next week. <music>